Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moinuddin. The topic of current video is verifying the method. As you know, we have seen in the previous videos how a method is selected for solving a problem. Then what are the various factors which are considered during selection a method? And in this way the method is optimized. So then after selection of method and its optimization, next step is the verification of the method. So in this video, we will see the various steps taken for verification of the method. Before starting the video, if you didn't subscribe my channel yet, then subscribe it right now and also press the bell icon so you may get in touch with my upcoming videos so after developing and optimizing a method the next step is to determine how well it works in the hands of a single analyst so definitely we want to know whether the developed method is working properly or not so we are going to do the verification or verifying the method and there are four steps make up this process and what are these number one is determining single operator characteristics number two is completing a blind analysis of standards number three step is determining the methods ruggedness and number four is the equivalency testing so now we'll see all of these four steps in detail so first step is single operator characteristics the first step in verifying a method is to determine the precision accuracy and detection limit when a single analyst uses the method to analyze a standard sample so this step is performed by determining the precision accuracy and detection limit of the method so let's see how these are performed the detection limit is determined by analyzing an appropriate reagent blank and let me tell you what is detection limit detection limit can be defined as the smallest amount or concentration of an analyte in the test sample that can be reliably distinguished from the baseline so this is called detection limit so it can be measured by using some appropriate reagent black then precision and accuracy these are already uh, well explained in the previous videos so pre precision is determined by analyzing replicate portions of the sample preferably more than 10 so precision is measured by taking replicates of the sample and usually these are measured in more than 10 times more than 10 replicates while accuracy is evaluated using a t-test comparing the experimental result to the known amount of analyte in the standard that is comparing the uh, comparing the results of our sample with that of the true value in this way accuracy of the method is fine then precision and accuracy are evaluated for several different concentration of an analyte means these parameters are not measured by using only a single concentration rather these are evaluated using a variety of concentration of analyte including at least one concentration near the detection limit and one concentration is what do you say you can say that is the uh, that contains the minimum concentration of analyte that is near the detection limit and for each different sample matrix and sample matrices are also varied so in this way 
uh, for different sample with different sample concentrations and sample matrices so for all of these uh, uh, samples uh, the precision and accuracy are calculated then using different concentrations of analyte actually it helps to identify the constant sources of determinate error in this way we are able to find the error if there is uh, uh, some error so we are able to find that one and establishes the range of concentrations for which the method is applicable and we can also find that uh, among what uh, what concentration range the ma the method is applicable then step number two is blind analysis of standard samples single operator characteristics are determined by analyzing a standard sample that has a concentration of analyte known to the analyst in previous step which was called single operator characteristics so we found different parameters like precision accuracy detection limit and the sample used there was a standard sample means whose concentration was known to the analyte but in the next step the story the story is completely different let's see how in blind analysis although the concentration of analyte in the standard is known to a supervisor the information is withheld from the analysis so in this step which is called blind analysis though the concentration of standard is known to the supervisor but is it is kept hidden from the person which is going to analyze uh, that standard that is analyst so that is why it is called blind analysis so that analyst that analyzes that sample and after analyzing the standard sample several times so he he or she perform it uh, the analysis for in replicates for several times the analyte's average concentration is reported to the test supervisor so this is called blind analysis of standard samples the step number three for verifying the method is ruggedness testing an optimized method may produce excellent results in the laboratory that develops a method but poor results in other laboratories a method which is optimized by an analyst definitely that is optimized in a single laboratory because he or she was working in a single laboratory so he or she has optimized that method but there could be possibility that this method could not remain valid in the other laboratories let's see what could be the reasons this is not particularly surprising because a method typically is optimized by a single analyst using the same reagents equipments and instrumentation for each trial because the analyst in a single lab that was using the same reagents same equipments and same instrumentation involved in that method and when the lab is changed so definitely the conditions are changed so the results could be changed as well so any variability introduced by the analyst the reagents the equipments and the instrumentation is not included in the single operator characteristics so these change in results in the similar method that is due to that may be due to change in reagents equipments instrumentation so it should not be su surprising actually other less obvious factors may affect an analysis including environmental factors such as temperature or relative humidity in the laboratory 
so uh, there could be some other environmental factors which can also vary by the change in laboratory like temperature or relative humidity and these may also change the result of the same method finally the analyst optimizing usually takes particular care to perform the analysis analysis in exactly the same way during every trial which may minimize the run to run which may minimize the run to run variability so by taking much care of that is providing the similar conditions in the next laboratory as that of the previous laboratory these variabilities can be minimized uh, to much uh, lesser level an important step in developing a standard method is to determine which factors have a pronounced effect on the quality of the results and this is uh, another important step which is to find which factor has more effect on the quality of result so to 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 find that factor it is very much important during developing a method and once we identify these factors we can write into the procedure instructions that specify how these factors must be controlled so these are mentioned into procedure so that it may work for the upcoming researchers or analysts and here's the definition comes a procedure that when carefully followed produces results of high quality in different laboratories is considered rugged while the method by which the critical factors are discovered is called ruggedness testing so this is the definition of ruggedness testing so for example if temperature is a concern means it if temperature is that important factor so we might specify that it be held at 25 plus minus with standard deviation 2 degree centigrade so temperature may be written in this way if if our method is temperature sensitive and the final step of verifying a method is equivalency testing let's see what is this if an approved standard method is available then the new method should be evaluated by comparing results of those obtained with the standard methods suppose there is already available a standard method and we are developing a new method so now we want uh, we are going to see the effectiveness of this new method so definitely we will compare the results given by this new method with that of uh, the standard method already available or approved uh, this is called equivalency testing actually normally this comparison is made at a minimum of three concentrations concentrations of analyte to evaluate the new method over a wide dynamic range so generally it is performed with at least three different concentration of analyte and then these are compared with that of those results obtained from uh, the standard method or alternatively we can plot the results using the new method against the results using the approved standard method so definitely we'll get a, uh, we'll get a graph a plot a slope of 1 and intercept of 0 provides evidence that the two methods are equivalent so if we get these results so it means the both methods are equivalent or uh, the new method that is equivalent to that of the standard method so dear students this was all about current video but still there are a large number of videos in the pipeline so to get them in touch with all of those videos you need to subscribe my channel so thanks for watching 
थैंक यू वेरी मच